much we got. So clearing. Get the charge to the rear. Safe. Place on safe and then return to. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. Zero five two zero two power. Line two bandit cobinos. Engage. Gas, gas, gas. Gas, gas, gas. Cord. Because if that starts flapping around in the wind, that's an instant no go. So you're good. Let's go. Again, this is an amazing accomplishment, and every one of you should be immensely proud of yourselves. So what 315 is doing today is we are testing the skill level one tasks of soldiers to test out for their expert infantryman badge and expert soldier badge. So it entails three different lanes, uh, one being a weapons lane where they would test on 10 different weapon systems in the Army. Another one would be medical of just skill level one medical tasks. And then the third one is patrol where they just move under fire. The soldiers out here would be on a medical lane where they do skill level one tasks such as treating burns, fractures, uh, abdominal wounds and head wounds. Uh, second lane would be weapons lane, where there are 10 weapons, such as the basic M4, pistols, shotguns, uh, machine guns, where they have to show that their ability to load, correct malfunctions, disassemble, and reassemble. Also, there's a patrol lane, where they have to move on a direct fire, load radios, and be able to re use resection on a map. I am the non-commissioned officer in charge of patrol two, which is move on a direct fire. Under that task, what they have to do is walk down a lane, and they will take fire from the enemy. They then have to do three movement techniques, such as the rush technique, a high crawl, and a low crawl, to close with on the enemy. So a key, some key tips for the E2B task uh, that I would give you are, one, uh, just get hands on the material so you know the performance measures of each task. Start reading over them and paraphrasing them in one to two words, just to shorten it up and make it easier to memorize. When you're going through the task, it's good to talk yourself through them. That way you can say the motion, do the motion. Uh, I think it's important to drive for those badges specifically for the, the basic skills needed to be a soldier, whether it is medical, uh, basic soldier, or infantry specific. Uh, just knowing those skills and just, being having, just having the opportunity to train on those skill level one tasks can make a soldier better regardless of the situations. I came to Tresvian to participate in the Expert Soldier Badge competition. Um, we began about three weeks ago with 10 days of train up um, and then we started testing this past Monday with beginning with the uh, physical fitness test and then testing uh, three lanes, patrol, weapons and medical and culminating with the 12 mile rock this morning and the clearing, disassembly, assembly and function check of an M4. I wanted to participate in the Expert Soldier Badge competition uh, because I wanted to push myself whenever there is an opportunity to try something that I might not think I will be successful at. I try it anyway because I, I would rather have tried um, and know that I have things to work on than not try at all. The camaraderie definitely enabled me to be successful. I don't think I would have been as successful as I was if it was not for my core group that I was able to go through this entire experience with. Try to get your hands on an EIB or ESB book and study the tasks, but if you have any inkling whatsoever of doing it, do it. 
uh, push yourself, um, see what you're made of. We did three weeks of, uh, two weeks of train up and a whole week of testing, but it took a lot longer than that just to get everything planned, get everything coordinated, get all the soldiers here because they're coming from all across the, the corners of Europe. Uh, so it, it was a, a pretty big process just to try to get everybody here logistically. Uh, but we had a great team working for us and we were able to pull it off. The, the last week I think is one of the smoothest weeks. Everybody's here, they've been training, they've done it for the last two weeks. Uh, so once everybody's comfortable, the graders know the schedule, everybody knows just how things are supposed to work. So the very last week, the testing week, it's a little bit more nerve wracking for the candidates because now this is the week that actually counts. Uh, but it goes pretty well because they've had those two weeks of train up. So I think it, it couldn't, I don't think it could have gone any smoother. The Army has the expert badges. It started off with the expert infantry badge uh, and it was just a way to recognize uh, soldiers going above and beyond their actual job. Um, granted, they're all skill level one tasks, but it, this is a completely voluntary um, test and it just kind of puts those uh, soldiers up on a, uh, exemplifies those soldiers a little bit, gives them that recognition that say, hey, hey, I can do all these things. I'm an expert in my field and in my craft. And it just gives them a little bit more recognition amongst the other soldiers. It started with the expert infantry badge and then the army branched it out to include the medical field and then eventually all soldiers acro across all MOSs so that they could recognize those soldiers as well. But the, the true blue for the expert infantry badge and the perfect edge for the expert soldier badge, every soldier that goes out for these badges is allowed three no-goes per lane. You have a weapons lane, a medical lane, and a patrol lane. So any, any soldier could get a no-go on each lane. The perfect, the true edge, the perfect edge in the true blue recognizes those soldiers that got 100% first time go on all three lanes, not a single no-go. So the Army, to me, I think puts a lot of emphasis on it because every MOS, regardless of what you are, we don't always have the opportunity to train on all these tasks all the time. We're usually focused on a select few. So having these three weeks to solely focus on these tasks, we're getting a lot of training that we wouldn't normally regularly get in our day-to-day -day jobs. Um, but it's also useful for leaders to get their badge. It kind of, it helps to uh, motivate their soldiers if they see their you know, squad leader, or team leader, you know, putting out all this effort to get their badge. It, it motivates the soldier to you know, want to follow that leader and earn their badge as well. And it also, um, it helps a lot with promotion. They'll see that they've put so much time and effort into getting this badge, into being an expert in their, in their craft, that sometimes it's, you know, it, it's looked highly upon for promotion. It, it's very humbling. I've, because I've done this before and I've earned my badge, I earned my badge back in 2012, it's 2024 now. I've been through a number of these uh, exercises and training events uh, at, at many different levels, many different installations. And just to see it all come together and how everybody plans it different and kind of runs it different. Um, but to me, just being able to, to be that leader that motivates their soldiers to get it, no matter, you know, I got it back in 2012. I've been to so many different units since then. And every time since then, I'm promoting this and trying to motivate all my soldiers, regardless of what unit I've been to, to get their badge. My advice for people that didn't make it through this time is to just don't give up. There's a, there's a number of people that have done it two, three, or four times and got it on their fourth one. Some people get it their first time, second time, third time, but just don't give up. A lot of people made it to the very last day and just a silly mistake cost them the badge. Uh, so just don't give up. You were perfect, you know, up until, up until you weren't. So just don't give up 